Hello, my name is Dawn Allen. We're gonna go ahead and start. Um, I've got a couple people joining us in just a few minutes here. Let me get them in. Okay, welcome to the second Dolphin Pod Chat. Um, we have with us as our guest speakers, Dr. Carter. Hi, Dr. Carter. And we have Dr. Routon. Hello. So we're going to go ahead, since it's only an hour discussion, we're going to go ahead and open up the discussion with any questions that you students may have. Um, Adrian will be calling on people for their questions. If you will type it in the chat, that way Adrian will see it in the chat and he will call on you when you have a question. All you need to do is write in there, I have a question. Okay, let's go ahead and open the floor with any questions. Madison Sherman has a question. Hi, I'm Madison Sherman. I'm the parliamentarian in the Student Government Association. And I was wondering if you know how science labs are going to look next semester. Dr. Carter, I'm guessing you want me to take this one, huh? <laughs> oh, I was muted, so I didn't know I could unmute myself. Um, can I start by saying a couple of things to everybody, um, just as introduction? Um, as Dawn has said, I'm Dr. Carter. I'm the Vice President of Learning, which means that all divisions and faculty and staff report to me in the college. And so I wanted to start out by thanking you all for participating in this podcast, because I think it's really important for us to hear from you and to try to help you understand what we're trying to do. As you all know, this is a very, very challenging semester, not just for students, but for faculty as well. Um, we basically redid everything to be able to make sure that everybody is safe and that we can make sure that people aren't going to be affected or sick. And if they are on campus, we have done everything we can to make sure that we have classes that social distance and that everybody wears a mask on campus. And so we do have lots of things that we aren't sure of. And I want you all to know that the leadership of the college meets more than weekly to determine if we are doing the right thing and to determine what we can do to best serve our students. The students really are our number one goal. And I want you to know that every faculty member full and part-time has basically changed their teaching lives to be able to teach online and to teach via Zoom. And you know what? It's something that if we had to choose we would not choose this. Um, when I was a teacher, the best part of my day was meeting with students in a class and having actual things happen in a class. And so to then go to a virtual environment is very different. I mean, um, I know that we have done lots of things to help our faculty be better at this. And I know that nobody really loves this. Well, maybe a couple people do. And so we do want to try to answer your questions and we do want to try to give you the best possible instruction that we can. And we know that there are some things that are not going to be perfect. Um, and so think about what's not perfect and how we can help you. I mean, we can't change what the governor says. We can't change the pandemic issues but we can help make the situation more bearable. And so Dean, Dean Routon is on the line too because he is in charge of all the general education courses in our college. And so all the faculty for those types of general education courses basically report to him or a chairperson. And so he is in touch with these people daily and he does have a little bit more day-to-day um, -day contact with some of the questions that you might ask. So you are right, Dean. Um, I am gonna hand this one to you. I want you to know that we did 
had meetings with the, the science faculty in particular this last week because science and math we know are very difficult subjects that um, are very abstract and more difficult to be able to do in a different format. And so I know you might have to repeat your question again because I've talked now for the longest I've talked in three days. But um, I want you to know that we are really happy you're on this call. And if we can't answer a question, we sure will try to find the answer or try to get some help for you. Okay, so don't be too upset with us. Um, I know Don thinks we know everything, but um, even between Dean and I, we don't know everything. Thank goodness some of the teachers are on this fo phone call too, so um, we might have to call on them. Okay, Dr. Routon, you may answer the question about the science labs. So again, thanks for being here, guys. Before I start talking specifically about the science, I just want to point out something. When you're registering for classes, or when you are looking at classes that you'll then talk to your advisor later about registering for, you need to remember that not one size fits all. And you probably have noticed, especially since COVID, we have more and more notes on the course schedule about what a course will look like, right? Whether it'll be web conferencing or fully internet or this, that, or the other. And even more so for spring, as we try to give you guys the benefits of both distance learning, but hands-on learning as well. There's gonna be more notes. So if you look at the online class schedule that you click to from the college's website, the notes will just be there at the bottom of the course, uh, each course description. But if you are looking at the courses in my services, you may not know that you're gonna to have to drill down um, and click on, it'll say notes or something like that, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you're planning your schedule, you've read all the notes for a class so that you pick one that's gonna be in the modality or modalities that works for you. Location won't necessarily be as big a difference um, because like the current semester, we will continue to do a lot of stuff with web conferencing, but depending on what kind of, especially science class you take may dictate um, what you'll have to do as far as coming to campus. So the question was about science labs, right, Madison? So I do have some notes, as Dr. Carter pointed out, we did meet with the science folks and we have a variety of things. In general, the theme is trying to get more hands-on, more face-to-face, -face, um, while at the same time keeping safety in mind, um, at the same time keeping in mind not all students can or want to come back to campus, just as students uh, might, some students might be more susceptible to, to uh, the virus and have family responsibilities that require them to be home because of the virus. Same happens for faculty. You have faculty might be more susceptible or you have faculty who might be caregivers. So one size does not fit all. Having said that, some things we are trying to do, for example, in astronomy, um, instead of just having purely synchronous, uh, asynchronous my courses, we're gonna have a second section that also has a web conferencing lecture part to it to give some one-on-one um, -on -one time with the teacher there. Physics, if anybody's taking physics, we'll be having take-home circuit boards. They have these labs that they're gonna to have to do. So they have these kits that they'll have to do the, the um, I don't wanna say experiment, but they have to do the project at home. So they get that hands-on touch feel. It's not just simulation. Um, chemistry in particular, we have more chemistry classes than we've ever had before as the need rises for more arts and sciences students who major in associative science. So this is one you're really going to pay attention to the course notes because depending on who your teacher is, it may look a little different. For example, some teachers right now are teaching web conferencing lecture, but then the labs are simulations online on your own time, synchronous, uh, asynchronous, right? Well, they're flipping that model in the spring because we've discovered that people really need the face-to-face -face for the hands-on part for the lab. So some teachers will now be doing their lectures in Moodle in an asynchronous format on your own time, but the labs might be on campus. Well, we still have the social distance, right? So the idea here is that in the computer, I'm sorry, in the chemistry labs, we have kind of six stations that normally four students would each sit as a group, and that would be your, your group for your experiments. What we're going to do is have one person come in per table. So there'll be six people coming in but you will rotate that. So throughout the semester, there'll be multiple labs, but each person will still have a chance to come in and get some hands-on 
And because you can do breakout rooms in Zoom, the other three people in your group can still follow along and give you advice and give you input and follow your measurements and take down your measurements to put in for their reports. Um, there's also going to be, I think, at least one teacher who's going to do both pieces face to face, who will do the lecture in a web conferencing format and the lab, as I just described, broken up with the one out of four people. So again, make sure you look at your notes. It may just come down to the time that you can take in your schedule, and I get that. But if you have options, look at your notes to see which format best fits your learning style. For those of you who are taking anatomy and physiology, this is going to be people who are going into nursing, might be in pre-nursing now. Um, we're doing a variety of things. Again, check your notes. So some classes will be fully synchronous. Again, just like the chemistry I said, um, we found that some students need more face-to-face. -face, so the lab and lecture component will be handled via web conferencing. But we have some other sections. Um, teachers might not do it that way, but they might have office hours for supplemental instruction. So that means your teacher might offer, won't require, but might offer you as an option to come to campus during their office hours if you're not quite getting it during the, the simulation labs to come in with them in the classroom and kind of go through the models that we have the 3D models in the classroom. Another option might be depending on some assignments might actually have some of those large plastic models available with specific instructions on what to do in the library in one of our common rooms that people could to do group work in. That might be another option. Um, in general, a &P is trying to do more with the physiology part. We know anatomy is a lot of memorization because you got so many body parts and structures and that's just, they're just what it is. But we wanna make sure that we're doing more of the higher order critical thinking stuff for the physiology part, for the functions of those body parts and, and what they're supposed to do. So just even with the same modalities, there will be some different kinds of teaching going on in the classroom. So there's a whole variety of stuff going on for the labs. And again, just check your notes. Yep, Dr. Carter. May I say something? Um, I know that there were some students this semester who had questions. And so I would actually urge you all, if all of these students who are on this call, is to talk to your teachers. They are the subject matter experts. They are the ones who set up the classes. They are the ones who can help you. Please don't be afraid to contact them and get, get to know them very well and keep asking them questions. If you aren't having difficulty at any point, don't give up. Contact your teacher and make sure he or she knows that you need more help. I mean, that is really why we're here. And we realize that this is a whole different learning situation for everybody. And the teachers at COA will bend over backwards to help you. And if they don't, then you call Dean Routon. And he will find these teachers and say, start bending. Because our goal is to make you successful. 100%. And so please use the resources. I know we have tutoring. Um, it's free 24-7 with a real person. And so we have lots of resources we want you to use and ask questions whenever you need to, please. And to follow up on what Dr. Carter just said, um, as she was talking about earlier, we kind of have to go with what the governor says, but we are now able to bring our staff back more than we have been. I think we just went a few days ago that we can have staff on campus 50% of the time, which means faculty are going to be having some of their current office hours for this semester, as Dr. Carter pointed out, on campus. So if you need to see somebody, if you need to see your teacher in person, that can be arranged. Of course, you're going to have to, you know, do your, wear your mask and social, dis social distance, but you can make arrangements with a teacher to get that face-to-face -face help even this semester if you need it. All right, um, the next question is from Noah Blue. Uh, yep, um, hello, I'm the Senator Chair for Student Government Association at COA. And which campus do you think is the most prepared to take students back the soonest? Well, I'm gonna say that hopefully all of our campuses are gonna do the same thing. We do have programs at other campuses that are already running face-to-face. -face, and so they may not be arts and sciences, but if we decide to do more face-to-face, -face, it would be at every campus pretty much the same. 
What do you think, Dr. Routon? Yeah, I agree. Um, and another um, variable in there is what the high schools are going to do. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because as you, as you guys probably know, some of you might even be dual enrolled students, right? Can, can I raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you're, if you're dual enrolled? See, you guys already know this. It yeah. also depends on what your high school does. And depending on the campus, for example, if you go to Curry Tuck, maybe you go to school first and you take the bus to campus or, or Chowan, you do the same thing. You take the bus to Chowan and then you walk over to campus there. So a lot of it may depend on when they're able to come back. Um, so that's another piece of the puzzle. All right, Tracy Collier. Hi, my name is Tracy. I am the Community Stairs Chair for the Student Government Association Executive Board. And my question is, do we have any tentative dates planned or uh, a time frame as to when we'll be able to go back to physical labs? Dean, I'll let you answer this one. Um, it, it, go ahead, Dean, I won't, I won't interrupt you. So I, probably, I think I've mostly answered that already, but just to clarify, um, we will have some of that different kind of lab environment where there'll be some face-to-face -face, as I described. Again, look at your course notes, but as far as completely having an entire class together at the same time with all 20, 30 people in a room, I don't know of that timetable because we are still you know, under guidance from the system office and from the governor. And unless Dr. Carter knows something that I don't, we haven't been given a timetable on when we could put an entire class back into a room together. And um, I don't know if you've been reading about some of the bigger universities who brought all their students back to campus early in September, and then about a week later sent everybody home. And I think that what they realized was what we thought all along, we're not smarter than them, we just, um, we don't have dorms and so we wouldn't have done that anyways, but it's really, really important that we maintain social distancing and we keep people safe. I mean, we would love to be back. Um, if you see any of us on campus, you probably wouldn't recognize us because all you'd see is our eyes. You wouldn't even know who we were. And so um, we're dying to have you back. I mean, I mean, and I mean that personally, it's really sad to walk down the halls and not have any students there. Um, but we really need to maintain the, whatever the governor says in terms of what we can do. And what, when Dr. Routon's talking about the system office, we are all part of a community college system. There are 58 community colleges and every one of the 58 community colleges is doing what we're doing. And so we have not brought people back except for particular programs where they have to be face to face like welding. It's really hard to do welding at home. <laughs> it's really hard to do nursing at home if you're supposed to go to clinicals. And so those people, um, we have fewer people in the classes. And so we try to maintain the six feet option of um, with that and wearing masks. And so I think that as soon as we possibly can, we certainly will bring people back. Now, when we start a semester where we are kind of we're kind of set for the semester. And so even though we have some classes that are synchronous, it's really hard to bring people to one campus if the teacher's at another campus. And so it's gonna be tricky to determine when exactly we can bring everybody back. So I'm sorry, that's our best answer, Tracy. Michelle Phillips. Hi, I am your SGA president. And my question is, how do you think um, y'all could help us get faculty and staff more involved in events? So what do you mean by that? Do you mean by that right now while everybody is Zooming? Or do you mean at another time? Or what kind of participation would you like the faculty and staff to, to do more of? More right now, um, like, for example, we have our um, fall festival coming up, um, and we're just trying to get more faculty and staff involved. Okay. Have you asked them? 
Yes, ma'am. And what did they say? They say no? We've had back and forth. Okay. Well, and I think that um, one of the things that Dr. Broughton was talking about is that right now um, we have faculty and staff, we're asking them to, if they can, be on campus 50% of the time. And so we also have faculty and staff who have compromised, compromised immune systems. And so I'm not saying they're all as old as me, but there are some faculty members who have um, family members who have some illnesses or they might have an underlying illness that would prevent them from doing that. And so I think that um, it would be fun to have people involved more. And I think that if we can make sure that we can social distance. Um, I know there are some teachers on this podcast who are dying to, to see real people. And I think that if we can set up situations and sometimes if we do them outside, we have the option of having more people involved. We cannot have large groups inside at this point. Um, we follow the governor's orders for that. And so if you can think of another way that faculty and staff could be more engaged with you, I'd love to hear it because um, I think that it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult, you know, in some places where they only allow a certain number of people in a place. So I guess I need more information about how you'd like them to do that and how we could do that. Because I think you need to know that the reason a person is a, an instructor or a faculty member is because they love to be with people to teach and to engage with. And um, I agree, it's not quite as much fun to do it on Zoom, but um, I think that we need more ideas of how we could do that. And I don't know if some of the teachers on this call, if you have other responses, um, I'm not in charge of unmuting you, so I don't know if you've been muted, but I'd love to hear from some of the teachers who are on this call what they think, because I know all of them, all the ones, I can see who's on this call. You, I know you want to be with your students. So do you have any response? Because I think that that's a really good question. Dr. Carter, before you ask them to chime in, I'm, I'm getting some private messages. So I want to give Michelle an opportunity here because this, I have some faculty telling me they don't know what you're talking about right now. They don't know what a fall festival. So why don't you take a minute right now and tell us what you're talking about? That's a good idea. Ms. D. Hi. So we had, um, before we were going to do the pod chat, we had a document to be sent out to the faculty and staff. Um, there was a, I'm not sure what happened, but I did have our IT technician, one of them come over to see what the issue was of sending out this email to staff and faculty. Unfortunately, she will be um, meeting with me tomorrow so we can find out how to send this. I believe Rena is in here with us, but she knows that um, we weren't able to edit or open it. Um, so we do apologize for that. Some of you may know because um, you've heard in the, um, the grapevine um, about it, or you've asked me and called me about it, but we are working on that. I've tried to work on it last Friday um, and you know, IT has been very busy. Um, so I was able to meet with her today and we're going to work on that tomorrow. So I do apologize. It is October 28th. We are having a trick or treat um, parade. It's our, some of you are used to our fall fest of coming out due to COVID. We've changed it as a parade and we're asking the community and faculty and staff to join us. Um, and you'll see more information. Um, hopefully we'll get the form out tomorrow and um, get it sent out so you'll know the guidelines of when it is, what time. So I do apologize again for that. Michelle, as far as participation in that parade, how can we get people involved? Well, I'll tell you how Miss Dawn got me involved. She said, that at the end of the trunk or treat, I can take home whatever leftover candy I have. So I was I was all over that one. It sounds like a good idea to me. 
Well, you better go visit his trunk then, so he would have to eat that all. Y'all start on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a great idea because it would be outside and it'd be a chance for us to, to see each other and to somehow have some connections. Do we get to wear costumes? Yes, ma'am. And also um, the YMCA has graciously decided to partner with us. So we will have both our campus and their parking lot as well. So we'll be able to oh, serve more people. Oh, that's a great idea. And we will also be having a car decorating contest as well. Okay. So do any of the instructors want to add anything to this? Because um, now that we know what it is, and I know in the past, many, many instructors have decorated their cars and filled their trunks full of candy and lots of kids have come um, in costume and some without to visit College of the Albemarle and I know we've done other things in the past as more of a fall festival so any instructors or staff members you want to add anything to that? I think that uh, some of the faculty members are working on uh, decorating ideas for the trunk retreat. So I know that I'm, I'm working with Lisa in the math department for something. Okay, good, see? Great. So There's Michelle, we got one teacher, two teachers. That's good. All right, the next question is from Abby Berner. Hi, I am, I'm Abby and I'm the public information officer in student government. And I've heard from like a lot of students that they've had some trouble with communication with their professors this semester, like especially with the online classes. Um, how should a student go about, like if they're in this type of situation, how should they act out if they like can't communicate with their professor? How should they go about that? You, me or you, Dr. Carter? You could, well, you start and then I'll fix what you said. So I would say, first of all, understand, um, and I'm not saying you yourself, Abby, but some students are on their own, especially in the age of COVID when you're at home in a virtual world or on their own schedules. They're doing work at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, um, and they think other people are up at that time. And that's obviously not the case. So I first I would say is you need to allow 24 to 48 hours to get a response. So build, you have to build that time in your communication. So if I've got a paper due Friday and I wait and email uh, Miss Lucretia White Thursday night, that doesn't really leave her enough time to help me. So first thing is to allow, you know, about 24 to 48 hours, number one. Number two, if after that time has um, expired, contact the teacher again, because as you can imagine, just as you guys email boxes are inundated from stuff from us, the teacher's email boxes are full too, and they may not have seen it. They may have deleted it by accident. You never can tell. But if you go through that a couple of times and you still don't get a response, then you probably want to contact that person's supervisor because there could be something going on with technology or some sort of other thing that we don't know. The supervisor might be able to help uh, find out who that is. And if you can't figure out who somebody's supervisor is, Miss Dawn can help you. I can help you. Um, the switchboard probably can help you. So I would say wait 24 to 48 hours, rinse and repeat, and then go to the uh, supervisor if you have to as a last resort. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to fix, Dr. Routen. And I think that um, if you do have trouble getting a hold of your instructor and you've asked multiple times, um, I think it's fair to, to find out what's happening because that's their job. Their job is to help you. So good question. Thanks, Abby. All right, we've got Tanisha Key. Hello, everyone. My name is Tanisha Key, and I'm a student ambassador for COA. Um, my question for you all is um, just forecasting in the future. Do you see um, maybe more night classes opening up? Um, I'm one of your students that I take two online classes, and then I, I'm um, in a program at night, the EMT program at night. And a lot of my co coworkers at Centera are asking, are there going to be um, any night classes that can kind of work around, you know, their schedule with them working full time and trying to, you know, maintain a life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I know COVID is um, kind of shifted things for us, but just forecasting in the future, do you see night classes maybe um, being an option for more um, other programs that we offer? 
So before I let Dean answer this question, because he's got all the specifics, um, we do have some night classes and the way that we run our classes is basically, um, it's not totally historic, but we cannot run a class unless there are at least 10 people in it, unless there's a special class that needs to run if people need to graduate. And so knowing that, and the reason we do that is because um, it's, it, it pay, we have to pay the teacher. And so we have to have enough students in the class to make sure that, that the, our costs are covered. I mean, that's a terrible thing to have to tell you that there's a business model to this. But um, I know that lots of people like face-to-face -face classes. And so in the past, we've had many more night classes and Dean Routon can tell you about this, but with the availability of online classes, people have taken advantage of that much, much more than any of our night classes. And so we do have some um, that are non-credit and we have some in some of the program areas. So I don't know if Dean, you wanna to respond to that in a little bit more detail because he and I have talked about this a lot and our goal is always to try to serve our students and to make sure that we provide a schedule that is convenient for them that we can do as easily as possible in a way that um, is most efficient. So Dr. Routon. So I can't really speak to your question about other programs, but I can talk about general education and then general education obviously end up being support courses for other programs. Mm -hmm. um, doc, as Dr. Carter said, night classes have um, gotten fewer as, as not just because of COVID, but as we shifted to more of an online learning platform, people have more fully embraced that. But I can tell you, we have made a concerted effort in arts and sciences, which is the division over general education, to always have night classes. In fact, the department chairs who uh, schedule courses in their areas have a directive that um, we will have what I call 12 and 12, which means a gen ed student can take 12 credit hours and be full time, but stay in a 12 week format. Um, because we know even though adult learners or others who want to face classes at night, you want the FaceTime, you also have other responsibilities and it kind of helps sometimes to not have to come to campus so many times. Mm -hmm. But we rotate through departments so you can get courses across different disciplines. You usually can get a science and a math and an English and a history or, or whatnot or arts and music, um, both at the Elizabeth City campus and at the Dare campus. Now, the Chowan campus and the Curry Tech campus don't particularly have gen eds at night because the populations don't go there at night. They have some CTE programs like in Curry Tech, they have aviation as a night program. But as far as gen ed, they usually don't have on those campuses because there's been no express desire or need. If there are specific classes um, that you need or you think a cohort of you and your, your um, friends might need, if you'll let us know, Mm -hmm. uh, we can try to look to that and see what the possibility might be. But just generally speaking, we do rotate mm -hmm. strategically. So we don't try to run the same classes every semester. So a person who can only come at night could still graduate. If they came in the summers, they could still graduate in a two year, just taking night classes. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as I said, it may not apply to all your other programs. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Okay, we have two student ambassadors, Michael and Ocean Dixon. Hi everyone, my name is Ocean Dixon and I am an ambassador for this year. So my question is, how will the semester count in terms of course evaluation faculty evaluation and productivity, et cetera, in light of this remote, um, new remote learning um, interface that we have going on right now. So are you saying, will you be able to do course evaluations? I'm asking, yes. How yeah. will it go? Like, yeah. have you guys already thought about the methods and how we would evaluate courses, teachers, yes. and the entire overall production or productivity? Um, for this year or this semester in light of the pandemic or the fact that we moved to remote learning. 
And so in the past, we have always done course evaluations with students and we do them online. So you will get something in your email. So it will be the same. But have they been restructured to accommodate the new form of learning that is taking place? I mean, it's not necessarily new, but it, it's more so done more. So have you guys revised the structure of that evaluation form right so we're not necessarily asking how it will be done we're asking how will you um how will the how will it change now seeing that we're not face-to-face -face, interacting with our peers seeing how the teacher teaches because some of the questions become irrelevant right in my okay so are you would it be helpful for you to be able to give feedback on specific things absolutely like that um i know that in the past and and I'm not done asking you a question because this is really helpful for me because I read all the faculty evaluations. And um, I know that sounds crazy, but it's really the only way that I can get a feel of how things are going. And so there's always a place at the end that you can add comments. And so if you wanted to speak in particular about the delivery method or something that you thought could be improved, I think you'd have a chance to fill that in and um, then we could read the comments. But I think what you're asking me, would some of those questions that you will answer be more to do with the new way that we are delivering instruction, right? Absolutely. Right. Okay. You're, you're just too offices away from me. I might come and ask you some of those questions you might want to have included. I can, I recognize where you're sitting. And so um, I'm going to try to catch you before you leave because we have not sent those out yet. And um, it is quite a production to send them out to thousands of people every year. Mm -hmm. They do get sent out. And so um, I would be happy if you could share some of those questions with me so that if we can modify the form in the next month or so, that would help us understand. I mean, I'm praying that this situation will not be our future forever, but we're just trying to get through the pandemic parts. And so I'm always appreciative of knowing what you want to, to give us feedback on. So. Thank you very much for that question. I'm, I'm really going to come down and see you. So don't okay. Okay, no problem. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. So if I could follow up a little bit on that. So when you're asking about the evaluation, I think really the underlying assumption there is that you're saying, what can we do to make online instruction better, right? Not, not just can we slam a teacher, but you know, if you're giving an evaluation, it's because you want the class or the teacher to perform better. And so is that, is that fair to say? That's right. right, right. So I think what you should also know, because she didn't bring this up and she's a little modest, is that Dr. Carter has spearheaded this redesign ever since uh, the spring, even before COVID hit. Uh, even last fall, we were starting and now she has it going full steam ahead. Faculty are getting much more training in how to teach effectively online. And it may not be reflected so much yet in the evaluation you guys get to fill out, but the evaluations that a person's supervisor gets to fill out, Dr. Carter has revamped those as well. She's also worked on a colleague observation form that looks different than if I walked in um, into Miss Allen's class physically face-to-face, -face, I would expect to see some things versus if I walk into her online class, as you guys know, it's a different you know, environment altogether. So that observation form is different. So I think Dr. Carter has been, and those of us who report to her have been trying to be proactive about improving instruction already. Uh, and part of that on the back end, of course, then will become the evaluation part. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to wait until the end and get all these bad evals and say, well, it's too late now. Right. We want to be proactive and say, what can we make better right now? And so, Dr. Routon, and I think that was the reason I had, when I, Abby asked the question about getting in touch with your instructor, is that if, if things aren't working, you need to let your instructor know. Mm -hmm. And so I know that um, it's, it's impossible if I had 150 students to change everything I do for every student. But I think that if you're having some challenges, maybe there's resources or other ways that we could help you with the class. And so please start by asking your teacher because they know that we're serious. They know that um, even though it's hard, 
this is our job and this is what we're expected to do. Mm -hmm. So please always contact your teacher if you're having any difficulties. Understood. And we aren't having any specific difficulty at the okay. moment. But it came down, it boiled down to a sense of being an advocate for yep. the, the students as students, as student ambassadors. And we just wanted to be sure that this evaluation is being modified, restructured, deconstructed, and or reconstructed right. um, in order to facilitate and accommodate what is taking place right now. And we also not only asked about the student evaluation, but also faculty, faculty evaluation, evaluation and the well. other ones. And we've realized based on the dean's answer, um, addition to what you said, um, is that things have been in place, infrastructure have been in place where you were able to modify those. And so it seems as if you were getting your way, making your way to the student one before it's being disseminated. And we are appreciative of that because yeah. that's that's how most of us are able to answer, you know, questions about or lecturers without facing the lecturer face to face. Right. And a lot of kids won't even write in the comment section, although you made mention of the comment section because they think mentally, oh, a teacher is going to be able to spot me out because they know my handwriting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, it's just the thinking. It's yeah. just the thinking. It's not ever like that because you're the one that goes through those evaluations. But it's just a mental thing. And no matter how you tell a student that, they will never think past that. They yeah. prefer to put an X beside what or <laughs> shade something in. Um, just so that it seems as if they remain anonymous. Right, than to give an actual opinion. I think um, the students on this call should be very ha happy that you two are their advocates. You're very strong and proactive. So thank you very much for those comments and those ideas. We appreciate thank it. You thank you guys. And if anybody asks you about those evals, just a point of clarity, teachers never see that raw eval. I they know. only see the typed out comments. They will never see those handwritten comments ever. We know based on the structure too, because they normally leave the classroom, especially the ones yeah. that we have to do, the hard copy ones, they leave the classroom, right. a student collects it and a student delivers it. So we know the process, um, but as I said, it's always a mindset, you know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and people sometimes are afraid to say something negative about their teacher just because, you know, they think it won't matter or mm -hmm. they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but mm -hmm. um, very rarely are people punished for comments made on something, it's really a chance for us to make improvements. I, I would also add to all the students, don't be afraid to say the good things too. Of course, it's, it's <laughs> of course, well, always. Not just because we like to hear good things, but because we want to know what works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and, and you make a, a very interesting point, Sardine. And, um, it would be interesting if you go ahead and in reconstructing these forms, state that at the top, bold, very bold. Because some of the times the kids get the paper and they'd be like, okay, let me start thinking about all the things that I had problem with. What am I? And they dig deep into the back of their brain and their experience in class just to figure out at least one thing that they had a problem with for you to fix. But without recognizing, hey, if I make mention of these things that are going good, the school will keep those in place for those that come after me. Right. So if you place that in bold mm -hmm. at the top of Even the form the or in the email, Tell us the good. yeah, to let them know. Because some of the times it's just a matter of thinking about in the moment without thinking about the bigger picture. Right. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we've got the SGA treasurer, Dylan. Hey, how you doing? Um, I would just like to ask if they are, there are more face-to-face -face classes this is coming up spring. Um, how are we, or how is the college going to prevent uh, the spread of COVID? Um, will there be screenings, um, often tests or temperature checks, things like that? Well, um, I'll start with Dean, okay. Um, we do temperature checks in the Owen Center and the students get temperature checks mostly because in their programs and in their clinical situations, they are always um, having their temperature taken. But our president and leadership team at the college decided not to do that. And mostly because we don't have enough trained people to be able to say, well, 
your temperature is this, so you need to do this, or your temperature is 103, so you have to go home. And so we just don't, we just decided not to do that and asked everybody to monitor their own health. And if they did have a fever or if they knew they weren't feeling well, that is really their responsibility to let us know that they are sick. And so I understand what you're saying because I know in some places before I could enter, I had to get my temperature taken, mm -hmm. but it's really not something that um, is feasible. And I think that what we've been doing has been almost miraculous in terms of that we haven't had an outbreak. And so what we're going to continue to do is to enforce that we wear masks when we're inside, no matter where we are, and that we do social distancing. And I think that those two things have done very well for us in the last four or five months. We've had minor numbers of people who've been sick. And for the most part, it's because they were exposed to somebody outside of the college. As soon as somebody is not feeling well, they are told to go home. And if they have any symptoms, an employee would have to stay home two weeks or 10 days, I should say. And so what we're trying to do is ensure that the person who might be infected that we know of is not around other people and that that person is staying at home. And so I think that what we're trying to do is to make us all responsible for ourselves and as a social group for others so that we are respectful of others' health as well. But we haven't made it um, like you're saying that we would send people home because we're, I'm gonna say we're all adults and that we care about our, our fellow people in the college. And so that we're really trying not to have that situation. And as far as are we gonna have more face-to-face -face classes? I think what we're gonna do is um, part of the things that Dr. Routon talked about is to have fewer numbers of people in some of the labs so that they can participate and that it can be less of an abstract kind of on your own thing and more with the teacher. We're gonna to continue to do the synchronous settings with the faculty so that you have a chance to listen to them and to ask them direct questions when it happens. Um, if we have other classes that I had told you about before that we are doing face-to-face, -face, we'll continue to do social distancing, have fewer people in the classes and enforce the mask wearing. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question mostly, Dylan? Uh, yes, because this spring, if there are more face-to-face -face classes, there's going to be more traffic, like more traffic on yeah. campus. Exactly. And we know that. And we have also, and I don't think we talked about this in this meeting, our maintenance people have this magic potion. I don't know what it's called. It's got letters and numbers and they use it to spray and to be able to disinfect areas. And I know that our... Um, maintenance people are doing a lot more cleaning. In some of our labs, we've also purchased these um, keyboard covers because we don't wanna wash down the keyboards, but we wanna make sure that things that other people touch won't be available to you. We've shut down the water fountains so that there's no spread. And we've closed some of our bigger areas like some of the dolphin den. It's not necessarily closed, but it's open to fewer people. Because you're exactly right, Dylan. The more traffic that's there, the more exposure you have on a longer period of time will be a, a chance for you to be infected easier. And just a, a couple other things. Um, in those classrooms that Dr. Carter's talking about that are, that are kind of really few and far between that have a face-to-face -face presence, in addition to the maintenance coming in there sort of beginning and end of the day, we also have those classrooms stocked with hand sanitizer, as well as spray sanitizer and sanitizing wipes so that in the class itself, you can wipe down your area before you sit down or what have you. So there are some extra precautions there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Vanessa. Hello, um, so I am Vanessa Fidi. I am a student ambassador. Um, my question regards the language department. So I know you had talked specifically to the mathematics and science departments and incorporating them back into the campus. 
but a lot of students struggle also with language. I was curious on what you guys plan on doing with the language department and ensuring that kids and I mean, students are able to get the um, full benefits of learning a second language. So right now we don't have planned for those people to come in. Cause if you, if you remember the way I described this, the labs, you're having one out of four people come in. Well, that's not really gonna work in a regular discipline like language. You're gonna come in one out of four people to get the face-to-face -face instruction. It just really is not gonna work because then you can't really go back and share that with your group. But do keep in mind, and I don't know if you're taking language now or if what format you're taking, but we do have those classes that are being run with web conferencing so you can still get the face-to-face -face component because you're absolutely right. Math and foreign language in a strictly my courses format are two of the toughest disciplines, two of the toughest courses to pass, and we get that. But at the same time, you, we can't fill 24 people in there for Spanish or French. Mm -hmm. So for now, unfortunately, the best that we're going to be able to do for that is to, if you need a face-to-face -face component, make sure you sign up for a section that has web conferencing. And in some ways, it's actually a benefit that we're doing, like, for example, French. Mm -hmm. While we might have Spanish at multiple locations, people who are interested in French last year could only take that in Elizabeth City. But because we're doing web conferencing now, you can be anywhere and take that class. So while it may not be ideal, there are some positives to the methods that we're doing as well. That's a good question, Vanessa. I mean, Thank I'm you. glad you're asking that. And I agree with Dean is that language is hard to learn and um, you need to practice it. So I know that some of, and I've seen the French teacher because he teaches on campus a lot because he uses um, different methods to do that. So I think that the other thing you could do is maybe ask your teacher if you could have or participate in offline discussions so that I know it sounds crazy, but um, I used to, when I was in college, we used to have clubs that you would go and speak the language because it's a little bit weird just to talk to yourself in French or Spanish or German. You need to have a conversation. You need to hear it and you need to practice it. And that is one thing that you could do on a phone or a web conferencing because you don't even really have to write anything with your talking. I mean, I know that there are written tests, but you wanna also be able to use the language. And I think that um, I bet your teacher would be happy to let you do that in different ways. Dr. Carter, I don't wanna call you out or anything, but I, I gotta tell you, that it's also a little bit weird to talk to yourself in English. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad you told me that. I will stop. I will talk to myself in German. <laughs> Vielen Dank. <laughs> okay, we have got Abby Berner with another question. All right, so we previously asked the president this question. What are some events you would like to see SGA do this semester for our students or next semester? What did he say? He's my boss. I can't say something <laughs> different. <laughs> I'm going to let Dean answer that one because uh -oh. uh, I need to know what he said because if I have to do something, then I, I'm going to do it. No? <laughs> he, um, Said, we just had like told him about like our fall festival and stuff and he liked that idea but like other than that he, was, he just wants us to get the students more involved so that's why I was asking you guys if you had any ideas of what we could do about that well you know it's a it's I love the the fall festival where we can be outside um, but in North Carolina people get really cold in December they really don't know how cold it is because unless it's 10 below, they won't go up there, you know, they're gonna stay inside. Um, and so I think it's harder as we get through winter because um, it gets dark and it's harder to do things outside. And so if we have to keep our social distancing, um, I think we're gonna need to be creative in how we do that. And so um, but that's a good thing for us to talk about with Miss Allen because she can help us with that. I mean, I agree that um, going to college for me, the best part was being with other people. And so we understand totally that this is a challenge and it is,
frustrating for many of us to, to do things social distancing. Um, personally, I go to work and then I go home because I don't really go to people's houses or do other things just because I don't want them to be exposed to any germs I have and vice versa. And so I think that, um, I think we're gonna have to be creative in how we do that. Um, I think that would help us to, to maybe do some Google searches to see what people are doing to have some more fun because you know it's not really fun for anybody to sit at their own house and Zoom socially. I mean, maybe Dean likes it, I don't like it. Uh, Abby, let me give you just a small piece of insider information. Dr. Carter is from Wisconsin, so she was trying to give us a little slam right there about the Tim below. Dr. Carter does not understand when we get two snowflakes why we need to go get bread and milk. She doesn't get that part. No. <laughs> and then when we close the school because it might snow. That's the funniest thing for me. It's like, no. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Dean. Is that is that all you had? No, to I, just, I, I do agree, and that's a conversation we need to have because I think it is very hard to be engaged in a Zoom format when you've been Zooming in class already all day long, or in your high school classes all day long. You don't really feel connected to people as much, and I'm a people person, and that's the thing I miss about the classroom the most. And I guarantee you, that's what the teachers who are on the call miss the most is getting to interact with students live. Yeah. So I think if we can come up with some ways to do something face to face that follows safety guidelines and follow the governor's rules, we should explore that. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something we haven't done before, or even if it's a time of year we don't traditionally celebrate, you know, just we can do what we want. We can, you know, we have space. Um, it doesn't have to be fall or it doesn't have to be Christmas. You know, you can you can pick a random time and, and do a student celebration. Mm -hmm. so I think that's something that Miss Allen might have to take the lead on with us and have some more conversations. I think it's a great idea to explore that because I love the idea of the fall um, October 28th festival because it'll give people a chance to do something different. And I'm, you probably don't know that we had multiple graduation ceremonies and parades just to have people come on campus so we could celebrate them. And um, they loved it. I mean, they got five minutes alone with the president and got to shake people's hands and we got to congratulate them. And it was really, really fun. It, it was fun to see these people back on campus. So we are dying to be able to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we have Michelle Phillips again. Um, so my last question is, is if um, the spring semester goes well, do you think we'll slowly start adding more classes back? Is that the goal? That's my goal. I mean, I can't think anybody, people say we're going to have a whole new reality, but um, I think for a lot of people, a college is a social learning place and um, as young people, I know that you all want to be with each other and you want to be able to have situations where you can get to know people and practice things and think about things and do some things that are different. And so I would love it if even if in the summer we could start changing what we were doing. That would be phenomenal. I, I would love to. I don't know about you, Dean. Dean has some things planned for the spring that um, I sure hope that they come to fruition. Do you want to say what you're planning, Dean? And are you talking about the trip? Yes. You're trying to jinx me? I, I'm, I'm trying not to give away your secret. So I don't think it's a, a huge, I hope it's not a secret with any of the students, but we, um, Arts and Sciences is the leader also for our study abroad program. And we are trying to go to Thailand. We have a number of people signed up. Again, that will depend on what our government and what the Thai government say. Yeah. Um, but even if we can't go to Thailand, we hope to go somewhere because the travel company that we use will allow us to switch the location if the Thai government, uh, which the Thai government is being very strict. They have almost a zero case right now because they basically locked their country down from outsiders. So they're real skeptical about letting us nasty Americans in there with all our germs. <laughs> 
but we hope that that would change in the spring. But if we can't go to Thailand, we, we hope to go somewhere. Um, as far as summer is concerned, we typically have fewer face-to-face -face classes in the summer anyway, because people work. Uh, obviously, a lot of people here work in tourist industry at the beach or, or what have you, and, and they need to be um, leave their face-to-face -face time for that. So we hope to have some web conferencing or even some face-to-face -face classes, but it won't be a ton in the summer in Gen Ed just because there's not usually demand because people are trying to make that money. Um, now, hopefully for fall, we'll see what happens. Fall would be really my goal to get us back on track, assuming the governor and assuming just health in general lets us get there. Um, but again, there'll be some in summer, but it won't be a massive wave. Okay, we've got Bailey Joyner. Okay, um, my question is, is there any way that we could possibly do a spring fling this spring coming up? I think that's a question for Dawn. Um, we're going to see what the guidelines are from the governor, like Dr. Carter was saying. Um, you know, the college is really on the coattails of what the governor is saying. Um, you know, we have a great group that is meeting every week. Um, at the beginning, they were meeting three or four times um, a week to make sure, you know, of your concerns and questions for the students. That was their first concern was you students. Um, so it's based on what the governor's saying. Once we see what the governor says, then we will let everyone know um, if what we can do for the events. And maybe by the time spring comes, there will be a better answer. And even though you might be taking some of your classes on Zoom, we might have more chances to be able to get together. That's a good question, Bailey. I miss you, Bailey. Where have you been? Bailey used to work in our office suite and I would see her almost every day and I made her help me on some projects. So I'm sure she's dying to do that too. Oh, then I have another question. <laughs> okay. Is there any possible way that we will eventually be able to come back and do like uh, where the students have jobs or whatever? The work study? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like that. I would love that. I mean, I think that's how I got to know Bailey and some of the rest of the students is that they work in the different places in the college. It's a great experience for them and for us. So as soon as we have that possibility, Bailey, maybe um, we'll see you again here. Yeah. All right, do we have any more questions before we end the ses session? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. It's not really a question. I just wanna thank the students again because I know you took extra time to be part of this and I appreciate your thoughtfulness and your questions. You had a lot of really good things that you asked us and um, most of the things we could answer. So I appreciate you not giving us too hard of questions. But please, if you're having any trouble, talk to your teachers, make sure we can help you. We really care about your success and you being able to get through your semester. Thank you all. Um, just to let all of you know that if you did miss our first pod chat, um, you can actually go to the College of the Albemarle's homepage. If you scroll all the way to the bottom to the black section, you'll see where it says YouTube. Um, all of the pod chats are recorded and we do put them on YouTube. So our last one was September 22nd with Dr. Bagwell, the president of College of the Albemarle. So if you did miss that, please go onto YouTube and watch it. Um, our next one is set for October 20th. You will be having information sent out to all of you through your email. So please, you know, just watch your email for the next pod chat. And I would also like to thank all of you uh, students, staff, faculty, and especially Finn, our dolphin, that he is our mascot. And so uh, again, thank you all for joining us and taking um, time out of your hard day and please be safe and y'all have a great day. Thanks.